hello, hello. I have John Beckman from Matthew, John Beckman, Dr. John Beckman. The adorable deplorable. Coming to you live from Southern Command with half my brain tied behind my back. Technical Discussions 003, the story of crypto and altcoins. So recently, there were some events that work that made me really rethink my investment strategy and make me rethink about how I need to take my financial future into my own hands. So I started digging into crypto. This was about four months ago, and I'm doing pretty good. I'm up 36% right now. So I'm doing pretty good. Now, quickly, let me just state as a disclaimer, don't ever use anything I say as investment strategy advice. And everybody should know that crypto fluctuates a lot. Don't invest anything that you're not willing to lose outright. All right, so I don't think people know what is happening right now. Or even people don't have a good read on the situation. So I'm going to try to just explain the situation of what's happening, tell the story of crypto. So crypto, crypto is nerd money. Invented by computer programmers who wanted to start issuing their own coins to exchange services online. And crypto was invented because the U.S. dollar, the value of the U.S. dollar, keeps going down. And this has bothered people in the younger generation. And as the U.S. dollar has gone, so also has the trust in the U.S. dollar gone down. Especially with people in my generation. So every time some crazy shit happens, I put more money in crypto. It's a hedge against the dollar. Now, when I say it's a hedge against the dollar, it's not as if as the dollar goes down, crypto would necessarily go up or as crypto goes up, the dollar would go down. They could both go up. So it's not like, it's not like crypto and the dollar are fighting, but it's just every time the US government does something crazy, it makes people want to invest in something that is not controlled by that U.S. government, and that's crypto. Okay, so the 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 there's some philosophical premises of crypto. So the philosophy of crypto is enshrined or guided by this idea of decentralization. Okay, decentralization is also very popular amongst coding communities and computer nerds. Again, people who don't want to be controlled by uh, main federal or a strong authoritative force prefer decentralization so any process that you can take and distribute the control of that to many dispersed parties is going to build a system that helps prevent bias in that system that's what decentralization is and crypto is decentralized money now i already explained kind of much of this how this works in that Bitcoin video I made. So go back. This is technical discussion 001. Watch the Bitcoin video. That will help you understand these cryptos a little bit better. Okay. So what people are, what, what the problem that crypto enthusiasts were encountering early on is you'd get together this group of people, these intelligent nerds, they would write the coding for these internet monies. And then they would issue them, okay? And I, essentially, there's like a large spike of interest. And then people start to lose trust, okay? And then eventually, those cryptos lose value, okay? So there's kind of like a conundrum of trying to establish these cryptos as real money. Because there's multiple cryptos competing with each other. And so... There's a lot of people right now who are kind of like fighting this out, trying to get dominance as the main cryptocurrency of the internet. Okay. So that's why you see there's this list of multiple cryptoins, crypto or crypto coins. Okay. So there's Bitcoin and then there's altcoins and then there's meme coins. Okay. So of the altcoins, the ones that I'll talk about today are Doge, ADA, Ethereum, Solana, Bitcoin Cash. These are the ones that I'm going to talk about today. And I'm just going to try to quickly kind of explain the rationale for these. And also talk about my crypto bag. So the crypto bag is the term that the crypto nerds use to describe how they've distributed their investment strategy amongst these crypto altcoins. 
Okay, so let's talk about the most trusted and safe crypto, Bitcoin. <laughs> I like this bearded lady generated by the AI. <laughs> okay, so Bitcoin is considered the most safe. It's got the most buy-in from the most people. It's got a very distributed network across the entire world. It's got what people call diamond hand holders, people who refuse to sell their Bitcoin. So there's people in the world who just want Bitcoin. They just want to hold it forever for their life, for generations. Okay. I'm talking like hundreds and hundreds of years. So Bitcoin is kind of a way to establish or the hypothesis. Everything here is a hypothesis because nobody knows exactly what's going to happen with crypto. Okay. But the hypothesis with crypto is that as humans become more and more computationally powerful and computationally intensive, like getting more and more involved in computers, Bitcoin is essentially going to establish generational wealth. Because everybody's going to want a Bitcoin and nobody is going to sell their Bitcoin. What you see is happening with Bitcoin is people are buying Bitcoin and then they're pulling it into what's called cold storage. So they're taking it off the markets and holding it in a in a place that can never, it, well, it can be taken off, but they're holding it in a place where they can't be traded. So they're removing it from the markets. So every month, there's less and less and less and less Bitcoin that you can even buy. Pretty And 93% of all Bitcoin has already been mined. Okay. So there's essentially a huge rareness to Bitcoin. You can't, you can't get it anymore. That's why it's dry. That's why it keeps going up and keep going, keep going up. Okay, and there's what's called the Bitcoin maximalist. Michael Saylor is the, from MIT is the most um, intelligent one of these Bitcoin maximalists. The Bitcoin maximalist hypothesis is just that Bitcoin is going to overall dominate everything. And so there's no better investment strategy than to take every single dollar that you own and put it in Bitcoin. He, Michael Saylor thinks you should even take out mortgages and loans and take on debt to put that money in Bitcoin because nothing is going to outgrow Bitcoin. Bitcoin is essentially the best, okay? So that's what Bitcoin is. People consider it safe. My crypto bag is probably something like 40 to 50% Bitcoin. So essentially all the money that I'm investing, much of it, I'm going into what you might consider the more safe crypto, the Bitcoin. All right, let's talk about our first altcoin, Dogecoin. Okay, so again, once, once Bitcoin was released, the nerds realized that they could do this themselves because the Bitcoin code was open source. So the nerds realized people who were intelligent enough to be able to understand the code realized that they could issue their own coins. Okay. So then it be started becoming like a Roman Republic where people are issuing their own, their own money. Okay. And you buy into these monies if you trust various things about them or various philosophies. So as people are releasing these monies, again, the problem is establishing dominance and trust within the public. And so, and the tendency is that these things tend to go up at first and then drop down. And it, there's problems establishing a constant sort of like growth pattern. Okay. Bitcoin so far has been the only one that's really demonstrated constant sustainable growth with the diamond hand investors that will not sell. Okay. Because if everybody sells, all of a sudden the crypto becomes useless. So Dogecoin is the idea. Well, you just take the Bitcoin code, take the Bitcoin and attach a meme to it. Something that everybody loves. This is no different from the idea that when in the Roman Republic, when their Caesar released his own money, he puts Caesar on the coin so that people who trust Caesar know they want, okay, I want Caesar's money because as long as Caesar's being successful, I'm going to carry this money because it's going to carry value. Okay. That's the idea of the Dogecoin is take the Bitcoin and just put a meme on it. And if people like the meme enough, they'll start adopting that currency. And so the best meme that was thought for humanity in this case is a dog because everybody loves dogs. Okay. That's the idea of the Dogecoin. So originally the Dogecoin was created as a joke. Okay. But now it's become something more different than that. Dogecoin was created by video game engineers who actually built monetary systems in video games. So in video games, there's, there's trading algorithms where people can trade money and buy things, okay? So Dogecoin was actually invented and written originally by these people who understood how to write video game monetary systems. And it has a few advantages over Bitcoin. So that's the thing that people don't understand about the altcoins is Bitcoin's, Bitcoin's great. Again, 40%, 40 to 50% of my bag is Bitcoin. 
but there are some technical problems with Bitcoin and that Bitcoin people just tend to hold and it holds value and you can pass large amounts of value. So it's kind of like if you want to be able to power to acquire a million dollars, you hold your Bitcoin. Or if you want the power to be able to send 20 grand somewhere across the world in an instant, you send it in Bitcoin. That's the, what you do with Bitcoin. But Bitcoin's not super great, not super well designed at a code level for daily transactional interactions. Okay, like buying, say like buying your coffee every day or tipping somebody you follow every day. Bitcoin's not right now currently a great system for that. So the advantage of the Dogecoin is the computational speed at which you can do transactions is faster. Okay. Bitcoin is actually getting to the point where the, the computational resources required to maintain it are, are, are huge. And at one point there's a criticism that like, that it was, that it was essentially like disruptive to the environment to have so many computer systems mining the Bitcoin. So to sort of make the system more efficient, the coders made the algorithms a little bit faster and a little bit less computationally intensive, but yet still maintain the similar things like the ledger that is encoded in the blockchain is still part of the Dogecoin. So Dogecoin is essentially just like a faster, a faster Bitcoin. You could say a better Bitcoin, although it's not necessarily going to be a better Bitcoin until it has more adoption. Okay. The other thing about Dogecoin is that Elon Musk likes Dogecoin. People think that that's not important. This is extremely important. So this is essentially Elon Musk's money. Okay. And the reason that you would want Elon Musk money is because the X platform is going to allow it's he's Elon Musk is trying to make the X platform. I'm in the middle of a video right now. What? Okay. Thanks. Elon Musk is trying to make the X platform like a global app that you do everything in that app. You could bank in that app. You could buy stuff in that app. Maybe it becomes like Amazon. You tip people, you read your news in that app. You spend, you wake up, you look at your coffee in the morning with that app, etc. So essentially the idea is that app is going to need a monetary transactional system. And that's going to be Dogecoin. So if you believe, if you're, if you, if you are inclined to bet on Elon Musk, if you're inclined to bet on this idea that humans are going to become technically more advanced and are going to work together in a technocracy to advance our civilization, then you would want to bet on the Dogecoin. Okay. My big bet on the Dogecoin this year is Dogecoin right now is sitting at 15 cents. Okay. When Elon Musk releases the payments ability in X platform, which is going to happen probably by August. It's already approved in half the states. Okay. When that happens, Dogecoin is going to skyrocket because people are going to realize that they can actually buy stuff with Dogecoin. One of the things that you will actually be able to buy is X advertisements, which is big. So if you're an online creator, meme maker, and you want to pay for advertising services on the most dominant app, the X app, you will be able to pay that in Dogecoin. And as soon as that happens, the Dogecoin is going to equilibrate with a dollar. And then as soon as the Dogecoin equilibrates with a dollar, guess what you'll also be able to buy? You'll also be able to buy anything produced by Elon Musk. Okay. So that's the bet on Dogecoin. So I own about 40% of my bag on Dogecoin. I put a big chunk in Dogecoin. All right, the next cryptocurrency we can talk about is Ethereum. Okay, Ethereum is essentially, again, when Bitcoin was invented, people saw what was good in the Bitcoin, but then started new communities that were developed upon the Bitcoin premise, making other things a part of the cryptocurrency. So Ethereum was the second cryptocurrency to ever be produced after Bitcoin. Okay, And the premise behind Ethereum was that 
Bitcoin's great. We'll keep everything about Bitcoin, but let's also build in the smart contracts. So smart contracts, I've never used one, but the idea is that if you're working for somebody online, you need to build a system where part of that transaction is guaranteed, encoded in the actual code of the smart contract. So smart contracts are actually like computer code that navigate transactions in a way that people can't get screwed over. So essentially you can create like if clauses. If like, for example, you put, if you're gonna pay somebody for a service, you put your money into some intermediary, which is held in code. And if the person, you can put an if clause, then if a person does X, then that person will receive your money. Or if a person does not do X, then your money will be returned to you, et cetera. So it's a way to ensure um, contractual agreements online. I've never used a smart contract, and that's one reason why I'm, I'm I, I don't have any money in Ethereum right now. I did originally, and I made a little bit of profit, but then I sold it. The reason I sold on my Ethereum is because Ethereum, the criticisms of Ethereum is it has high transactional volumes, or high, excuse me, it has high transactional taxes almost. So every time you do a transaction, it'll take a tax. And so that tax, I've heard people say it's something like $50, okay? So, so it's kind of like a high tax system. The other criticism about Ethereum is, is it's very slow computationally. And that's actually an important thing in computation. What many people don't understand is that if you're trying to build the, do the global dominant cryptocurrency, if something was to establish, there would be hundreds of millions of transactions every day. And so hundreds of millions of transactions, the only way to handle that is through fast computational algorithms. So if they're not optimized, that can be a problem. So the criticisms of Ethereum are that it has high taxes and it's slow transactional volume. In contrast, there is a cryptocurrency called Solana. So this is just cryptocurrency, there's this other alternate cryptocurrency called Solana, which is essentially marketed as the better, faster, lower tax Ethereum. So Solana is kind of marketed as the Solana, or Solana is marketed as the Ethereum killer. So I don't have a ton of Solana, but if the idea of the smart contract becomes a big thing, then Ethereum will probably do pretty well and Solana will do pretty well. And because Solana is sitting at a lower price, Ethereum right now is almost $3,000. So to get one Ethereum, it's it's very expensive. It's about $3,000, okay? But to get a Solana, Solana sitting right now, it's, it usually floats around 110 bucks. So to get a better Ethereum that enables the smart contracts with a chance that this could grow to uh, 10X, essentially like this is a chance for a 10X investment with the smart contracts. I think Solana is the better buy at this point. So I have just a little bit of Solana, maybe like 1%. Like I don't have a ton of this, but I'm have a little bit because I'm curious to see how it goes, how, what happens to it moving forward. But I don't have any money in Ethereum right now. I might invest in Ethereum after the ETF gets approved, but I want to see what happens if it drop if the price drops after that ETF. So right now I'm not holding much of this smart contract money. All right, let's talk about ADA, or also known as Cardano. So Cardano is like the coded system. ADA is the money within the system. Okay, this is a really interesting cryptocurrency to me. Okay, this was invented by this guy named Charles Hoskinson. Charles Hoskinson was one of the original inventors of Ethereum. Okay, but what people, what has been happening in the cryptocurrency domain is that these groups establish they mint a new crypto coin under sort of like some philosophical principles. And then there's often disagreements within those communities. And then those disagreements in those communities cause bifurcations. So it's almost like when the early Christians got together and then eventually there was the 
the the split between the Orthodox and the Roman Catholic Church, and then there was eventually splits between the Lutherans and the Protestants, etc. That's kind of what's happening in cryptocurrency. So all these nerds are getting into fights about how the coded systems should be run. Okay, and Charles Hodkinson had disagreements with the Ethereum people and split off and built his own cryptocurrency. Okay. And the idea between this or the idea of the Cardano system is an interest, which is an interesting idea is that now that Charles knows that this is going to be a problem, that there are going to be these disagreements, Charles tried to build a system where there was a democracy, like a voting system built into the coded blockchain. So holders of the money, holders of the money could actually in a decentralized way vote on any new changes or updates to the system. Okay. And so the, again, the, his, his criticism of Ethereum is that the updates and the processing of this cryptocurrency is controlled by one person at the top of the Ethereum chain. Okay. Charles's belief is that as cryptocurrencies grow and accumulate adoption, people are going to want a democratic cryptocurrency where if you are a holder of that cryptocurrency, you can weigh in and you can say, determine in the future how that cryptocurrency should operate. Okay. And that's what he's building. So the correct way to see Cardano is that Charles is trying to encode democracy into a cryptocurrency. The other thing that Charles is doing that's very interesting is Charles is using the money that he gains to fund academic researchers in computer science. So he's finding academic researchers in computer science and he's developing the blockchain technology through academia. So he's hiring professors to quantitatively figure out ways to study cryptocurrency and make new usage cases and, and study things about it. So he's sort of, you, you might think of this as like the intellectual cryptocurrency. So to me, Cardano is pretty interesting. So I have, I mean, maybe like maybe like 5% or less of my bag is Cardano. So I have a decent investment in this Cardano because I think just this, this thing is really interesting. Also, Charles is pretty charismatic. So he's got a YouTube channel and he puts out videos that I actually find pretty interesting. I'll watch a video here every, every here and there every month on this ADA cryptocurrency. And just because of that, because I know that there is a, a charismatic leader in this organization that gives me more trust in investing in this opportunity so i have a decent investment in the cardano cryptocurrency Okay, the final cryptocurrency that I will talk about, which I'm starting to establish a stronger position in, is the Bitcoin Cash. Okay, we talked about how the cryptocurrency communities can sometimes have these disagreements, and if those disagreements happen, you get these splits, okay? Sometimes that's what's called a fork, where if the blockchain is moving forward, if, if there's a disagreement of a subpopulation, they will take that chain and they will split off and they kind of like go off in their own way. Like they're kind of, it's kind of like saying like, we're done with you guys. We're going to go and do our own thing. My impression, I need to do more research on this. Do not take my word here. Cause I'm just learning about this. You're, you're hearing about this from somebody who is trying to learn about it. So don't take everything I say completely seriously. But my interpretation is that the Bitcoin cash was a small community who understood that the Bitcoin algorithms were not quite, fully optimal. And so they decided to embark on this fork. Okay. And in the Bitcoin cash, then they took those algorithms and they developed some kind of computer coding that then optimizes those algorithms for daily usage. So Bitcoin cash is seen as a Bitcoin variant that is more readily usable for transactions. So it's like, you might hold all your wealth in a bank, which is Bitcoin, but then when you go to buy some food at the grocery store, you'll actually cash that out in this Bitcoin cash and you'll do the transaction in this Bitcoin cash. Okay. And this is interesting to me. The reason I'm starting to establish investments in this Bitcoin cash is one, because it's pretty cheap right now. So you can get a full Bitcoin 
uh, Bitcoin Cash, one Bitcoin Cash for about 300 bucks. So that's pretty cheap. So I like the idea that this could 10x, this could this could 30x. And also to the Satoshi emails. So the guy who invented Bitcoin were just, there were some emails that were just released from that guy. And one of the things that Satoshi said in some of those emails is that is that the Bitcoin transaction interface had not really quite been um, optimized. And that's precisely what caused this fork in the Bitcoin cash system. So if you trust Satoshi, it's probably a worthy investment to pop a little bit of money into this Bitcoin cash to see what's going to happen. Okay, so those are that's my crypto bag. Those are a discussion of all the altcoins that I've studied and why you might invest in them or what the what the premise is behind the coin. Again, don't do not invest based on what I'm doing. I'm just trying to learn this myself, although in my learning, I'm actually doing pretty good. I, I'm doing pretty decent right now. So I'm going to keep doing this and I'm going to keep releasing videos and I'm going to keep trying to increase my wealth and my financial security. Have a good day.